So here I have the final drum from the $20 drum set. This is the 13 inch tom. And in the previous video where I painted the 12 inch tom, I hinted that I was turning this into a snare drum. Before I can do anything with this drum and before I can cut it up, I want to get all the finish off. So the previous owner, they, they refinished these drums, but they did like an absolutely horrible job. So there's like just the thickest layer of polyurethane on these things. So I broke out the sanders and I started with 60 grit just to get the majority of the, the finish off. And once I got it down to bare wood, I went to 120 grit. Oh, look, I got Grandpa's 1960 Ludwig. Oh, it's so not shiny. And now also before I cut the shell down to its final size, I'm gonna fill in the lug holes as well as the tom mount hole. So right now I'm wiping down the shells with the mineral spirits and that'll make sure all the dust is off the drum. And then also I'm blowing out the inside of the holes. So that way when I fill the holes, I know that the bondo will fully bond to the shell. And then this was my last bit of tape. So a little trick you can do is just prop up the blade and run the, the roll around it and you'll get more tape. So then I broke out the professional drum lug hole filler aka Bondo. <laughs> just like my previous videos, I mentioned that I use Bondo just because I have it on hand. So again, this is what I have, so I'm gonna use it. And of course, more sanding. All right, so now the fun part. I finally get to cut this shell in half, or not exactly in half, but I cut off two and a half inches from each side of the drum, so that left me with a five and a half inch shell from the center. You guessed it, more sanding. I'll spare you the details. Okay, so now it's time to put a finish on this drum. If you remember in one of the first $20 drum set videos, I say... So it's kind of like a, a Mad Max, you know, rat rod sort of drum set, if that makes any sense to you. Kind of just using what I have, even though it's not exactly right, but it, it does work, so yeah. And I sort of lost that vibe with this drum set as far as, you know, how it looks. So I wanted to do that with this snare drum, kind of make it look like a piece of crap. But uh, my original idea was to wrap it in metal, so I cut up an old furnace and my plan was to make it all rusty and make it look all, you know, vintage and beat up. But the more I thought about it, the more weird I thought it would look, especially if the shell was all rusty and if the lugs and the hoops were all nice and shiny stainless. So I decided not to do that. So I experimented with the finish a bit, I put some paint splotches on it. And then I gave it, you know, a light coating of black spray paint just to make it a little bit darker. And then I burned some of the parts, which you can't really see. But uh, this, this, I don't know, I just don't like the look of this. So I'm going to get a can of black stain and hopefully that'll make it look good. If not, I honestly have no idea what I'm going to do. And now back at it with the sander. And if you're wondering, I'm going to leave the Bondo how it is. A lot of people are probably going to disagree with how I finished this drum, but this is what I'm going for, so if you don't like it, whatever. So here's the stain I'm using, and you'll notice it's really, really black, but when you stain something, you want to like flood the surface with the stain, and then after it dries for a minute or two, you want to wipe off the excess. So after I did that, I was left with this. And now to get the finish that I want, I'm doing some really light sanding and I'm kind of just doing it randomly here and there. And you'll realize that the, the grain on this drum is really wide and really open. So by sanding it, I remove the top layer of stain, but the black, the stain, it stays on the inside of the grain. So after sanding, this is what it looks like. And then it's just a matter of adding a whole bunch of coats of clear but for the sake of time, I'm just going to show one coat. And of course, safety first. And already with just one coat of clear, you can see it's a whole lot darker and actually starts to look good. Okay, so now the hardware. Everything for this drum I bought from drumfactorydirect.com. The only thing I didn't get from them was the rims because I already have a set of rims, but everything else I got from this website.
So this butt plate only costs 50 cents because it was a blemished item, but you'll notice that it's missing a screw and actually it broke off on the inside of the, of the threads, which is why it cost 50 cents, but I just had to drill it out and that wasn't a problem. And then I got rid of the old one and put in two new screws. So this throw off was also a blemished item. You'll see there's a tiny little nick on the side, but actually I was kind of skeptical about buying this one because I thought it looked kind of weird, but it turns out this thing is actually pretty sweet. You can see the thumb screw screwing right now and that adjusts the tension of the snares. And now the actual throw off is a cam lock, which I've actually never seen a, a throw off like this. So this is pretty cool. And now comes my least favorite part, and that is lug layout. I actually have a video on an easy way to do this, but that only works with six lug drums, but this snare drum is gonna be an eight lug drum, so that technique will not work. So then I figured out the geometric way to do it, which is to draw an octagon, and to draw a perfect octagon, you draw a square, and then divide each of the sides by three, and then connect the dots, and then you get an octagon, or at least if you do it right. And then when you connect the corners, you end up with 45 degree angles. Again, if you did it right. So that gave me another idea. So I tried to recreate the 45 degree lines by totally bypassing the octagon. So I use, I guess that's a, a drafting square. I use a framing square, a level and a carpenter square, but even still the angles were just a little bit off. So that was a fail. <laughs> So after all that, I decided to do some research, finally, and I found this thing, which is a cake divider, which it's, I guess if you wanna make perfect cake triangles, then you use this thing as a little cutting template. Uh, so I was about to buy one and it cost like 10 bucks, but then I realized I have this thing. So this probably isn't the most proper way to do this, but you know, it's what I have, so it should work. But all I did was mark out where the drum goes. And then after that, it's just a matter of marking where the lugs go. And then it's just a matter of figuring out the spacing between the mounting holes of the lug. The lugs I got are two and three eighths inches long. The mounting hole is a quarter inch and they're spaced two inches on center. And then I just marked those holes with a center punch. So that way when I drill the holes, the drill bit will wander. And then you just gotta drill all the holes. So my drill press is really small and really ghetto. So you'll see that the base of it is actually flipped around and I just screw that into the workbench. So that way the table of the drill press is hanging over the edge of the workbench. So that way I can actually fit the drum underneath it. And then also it's hard to see, but I have a waste board underneath of the drum. So that way when I drill through, I won't get any tear out. And then I just got to route the bearing edge. I'm doing a slight round over on the outside diameter. And then on the inside, I'm doing a 45 degree angle. So that's actually pretty steep for a bearing edge, but I'm trying to replicate a bearing edge from a steel snare drum, just because you rarely see that type of bearing edge on a wooden snare drum. So I figured I'd give it a shot and see how it sounds. And for the snare beds, I'm doing all that by hand with a file and some sandpaper. And then I just have to drill the holes for the throw off and then put it together.
last little edit was sort of out of place, but I got a new light. I was playing around with it, and uh, just that beat sort of matched the aesthetic of the video, so that was the result. But if I was to do this again, I probably would cut the shell a little bit deeper. I would also get shallower lugs, uh, but I already have a 13 by 7 and a 13 by 6 and a half inch snare, so I figured I would make this one a little bit more shallow at 5 and a half inches. But if you like this sort of video and want to support what I do, I have a Patreon page you can check out. I also sell stickers if you want to buy one. There's a link in the description. But uh, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, you probably want to hear it. <laughs>